Dr. Rosal Robson Bosch, affiliated to the Department of Practical Theology and Mission Studies, Faculty of Theology and Religion, University of Pretoria. In order to introduce the Mother Earth, Mother African Theology book to the reader, one has to understand two things. The first is the work of the Circle for Concerned African Women Theologians. At its inception, Professor Mercy Amba Odeyoye sought to create a space where women could reflect theologically on key areas that were actively inhibiting their ability to function within society. Previous themes have included gender-based violence, the struggle against HIV and AIDS, and an African woman's theological hermeneutic. In keeping with this drive to think anew about the lived realities of women, Professor Musa Dube invited scholars to tackle the question of climate change through the lens of Mother Earth and Mother Africa at the fifth Pan-African Conference held in Botswana in 2019. It was then also that Professor Dube expressed the desire to greatly increase the corpus of the circle's work by eight books. This book represents one of the eight books and showcases in particular an interdisciplinary theological approach to the theme. While the first aspect gives context to the circumstances in which this book arose, the second aspect speaks to the method that this book proposes. This book suggests that in order to reflect on climate change in Africa, one starting point has to be that of the actual circumstances that African women face on a daily basis. For example, when speaking of climate change, some women concern themselves with how much further they will need to walk to get clean water. For others, it may mean protecting the field so that when needed, it will yield the medicines that are required. So one aspect of the methodology this book uses is that theorizing is informed by what happens at grassroots level. Another aspect of its methodology is the matter of the African continent and the various exploits it has endured in the distant and not so distant past. It's about understanding the implications of, on, of living on a continent where resources have been used to build other empires, leading to resource scarcity. This aspect of a previously conquered Africa and the implications it has for individuals wishing to now develop their own communities then leads to a final dimension, that of the feminine register. A feminine register lends itself to the idea of fruitfulness, fertility and the way that the earth provides, almost like a parent does to their child. In this book, the language of fertility and fruitfulness finds perpetual theological expression in the freedoms and limitations that women and the earth endure. This ensuing lens colours the methodology in this book, giving to it a characteristically gendered reading of theology. With the perpetual interplay of the earth, Africa and a gendered reading of it, the grammar of the book opens a conversation where all are invited to think through the complexities of climate change. So by way of illustrating what the book calls an eco-African womanist theology, one might think of Cyclone Anna and the impact that it is having on individuals in Mozambique, Malawi and parts of Southern Africa. Here it's about placing the needs of women within these respective spaces on the agenda and seeing how their lived realities give new registers to key questions. This then is also the purpose of the book. It takes the interplay of the earth, Africa and women's experience and brings theology into it as a central conversation partner when thinking about climate change. I'll now hand over to Dr. Sine Chisale, who, who will tell us more. Hi, my name is Dr. Sinechisale, Chisale, a lecturer at Midland State University and a research associate of University of Pretoria Department of Practical Theology and Mission Studies. This book interrogates how the earth human relations are imagined in cultural, religious and theological sources and how such perspectives may or can be user friendly in, the, in today's environmental crisis. The book is an integral part of the scientific scholarship in the social and humanities environmental law, pure science, tourism, natural resources, and economics. Focuses on how the global environmental crisis are linked to gender oppression and are a threat of life on Earth. Thus, the need to reimagine and reinterpret this link from a perspective that empowers women and all members of their community. 
The book consists of a foreword by Nyambura Nyoronge, who provides an insightful background of the circle. Nyoronge presents the importance of a mother and a woman in various sectors of life, including the church and family, as she unpacks the importance and the importance of this book to the readers. The introduction is presented by Professor Yolanda Dreyer, who introduces and summarizes the three themes and the 11 chapters of the book. The first theme is creation, the Trinity and Mother Earth. In this theme, the contributors discuss the creation stories in which the Trinity is critical and then a call for ecological upkeep to promote justice for all God's creation. The section begins with a chapter that introduces the methodological underpinnings of the book that draws from African eco-feminist theology and African eco-humanist theology to reimagine human relations with the earth from paradigms of liberation. Two chapters under the theme of creation, trinity and mother earth argue that trinity is critical in the call for ecological upkeep to promote justice for all God's creation. Chapter two of this book uses the insights of Julian Norwick's thinking on Trinity and vision of Christ's wounds to describe Mother Earth, Christ's relations. According to the chapter, the cross is significant in developing an Earth-friendly Trinitarian model. With a uniquely feminine grammar of the cross, the chapter depicts Christ as the mother who carries Africa in her womb. The cross symbolizes the reality of both suffering and restoration. Chapter three uses, utilizes the creation story to explain an earth-centered rather than human-centered theological point of view. The concepts of oblig obligate symbiosis and facultative symbiosis are used to demonstrate the Trinitarian model of God human and nature coexisting harmoniously for a better ongoing output. Thus, according to the chapter, the partnership between God and humanity is essential for the sustainability of creation. The second theme of the book is caring for Mother Africa. In this section, chapters interrogate the involvement of faith communities in environmental matters and sustainable development. This section has four chapters and is the longest of the book. Chapter four uses eco-justice theology to describe the role of Christianity in sustainable development by focusing on the effects of climate change and environmental sustainability. Using feminine images of the Earth Bible and various African cultures, particularly the imagery of a mother, the chapter emphasizes the relationship between human, human survival and the survival of women. Chapter five investigates the harmful consequences of pollution, particularly the black suit on women with disabilities in Port Harcourt in the Niger Delta, the oil producing region of Nigeria. Describing the vulnerability of women with disabilities due to environmental crisis, the chapter highlights the primary health effects people with disabilities suffer because of the secondary sociological and psychological consequences of pollution. Chapter six, therefore, draws the parallel between the oppression of women and exploitation of the land by both the church and the culture. She uses Mozambique as a, as, as a case study. The abuse of women and land is justified by invoking scripture and cultural beliefs in the African continent. Environmental degradation causes global crisis as well as human, human crisis. This is addressed, by, is addressed in chapter seven. The chapter uses water Ubuntu philosophy to, to interrogate the problem of water scarcity in developing countries with a specific focus on Botswana. The human and non-human are connected and that their interdependence, interrelatedness and mutual responsibility are central to all. The chapter therefore calls for the church to be involved in environmental issues on three levels. That's its relief, development and advocacy. The third and last theme of the book is Mother Africa and their daughters in 
fertility and fertility. The section focuses on the interplay of the struggles of Mother Africa and her daughters in connection to attitudes and practices with regard to women's reproductive health in connection to nature. There are three chapters under this theme. Chapter 8 discusses the concept of wasting womb and contraceptive use in light of social teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. The chapter proposes an ethic of interconnection and interrelationality that is conceptualized as eco-public theology and eco-spirituality that extend beyond the spiritual realm to include the practice-oriented engagement by all. Chapter 9 explores the interconnectedness of reproductive health and the environment, the environment by the community of the Ndebele in Zimbabwe and, and, and invokes environmental ethical concerns. It highlights how the social expectation in traditional African communities that women should bear children has led to positive interdependence of human earth, of human earth relations that promotes eco ecological concern. Chapter 10 examines fertility, infertility for both human beings and the earth in the context of Ethiopia. The chapter interrogates how belief by indigenous traditional communities on the interconnected and interdependence of human earth connection is worth learning from. The last chapter of the book, chapter 11, interrogates mutual stewardship by Ikare women of Nigeria. The chapter shows that both genders are usually called to work out to care for the environment in Ikare Akoko as mandated by God in sacred text. But women seem to be the only ones bearing this responsibility more than men. According to the chapter, Moral relationships between humanity and nature entail that stewardship is the responsibility of all human beings and all religious traditions. I thank you.